I'm Dean Boss with uh, MSU Extension. I am Sustainable Ag Educator uh, statewide for the state of Michigan. And this is? I'm Paul Gross. I'm an Extension Educator in Isabella County, working in field crops, cover crops, soil health, and working with Dean, which is a pleasure to work with Dean always, uh, uh, in this demonstration. I didn't wear my boots, but we'll go forward. <laughs> Okay, so uh, what we have here is a demonstration we like to show people, and it's really to talk about soil health and the benefits of having healthy soil. Anybody here want to give me a definition of health, soil health? What makes what makes healthy soil? Water, organic you need water, organic matter. That's good. What else? How well the crops do. What about the soil itself? Aggregate structure, structure of the soil is important, all of that stuff. I tell a lot of people, we spend a lot of our life, and a lot of farmers do this too, looking above ground. They look at what's above ground and they totally judge how the crop is doing by what they see above ground. We need to start looking below ground. We have a saying in the soil health world, dig a little, learn a lot. You know, take a shovel out there, dig a chunk of soil up, pull it up and look at it. Contemplate it, smell it, feel it, and then go to that fence row where nothing's ever been grown, do the same thing, set them side by side and look at the differences. So one of the things that's happening, and we really experienced it this year, is we're getting a lot of moisture in large events, all at one time. If you don't have somewhere for that water to go, where is it going to go? Lake Erie. Saginaw Bay, you're going to lose soil with it. But even more so, more important to farmers is, if you're used to growing crops with 31 inches of precipitation in a year, and now because of the way we're getting the precipitation, you lose five inches, now you're growing with 26 inches of precipitation in a year. So you're hurting yourself, you're, uh, you're running at a deficit. So. What this demonstration is, it's called a rainfall simulator. We're going to turn it on, we're going to let it rain, and we want, want you to watch these soils. So what we have here in the center, this is don't pave paradise and put up a parking lot. This is impervious surface. These two are both tilled soils. Soil has been tilled. The only difference is that we put a, a light coating of residue on here, probably oh, roughly 30-40% residue. This is a long-term no-till. This, this has not been tilled for a lot of years, and it was in oats. And this is our fence row. This is, if someone was telling me this might be poison ivy, I'm not sure, but I'm not sensitive to poison ivy. But, uh, this has never been tilled. This, this is just natural soil. This is as natural soil as you can get in the way it's formed. And what we want to do is run this, and this is an exercise and observation we're going to watch what happens and talk about what happens. But before I turn it on, what's your guess? Which one's going to run off the most? The middle one. The, the, the middle one. The middle one. one. Good. Got that one. Which one next? <coughs> what do you think? Yeah? The, 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 the natural the soil. Na yeah, natural. That's going to run off the most. Someone else want to guess? <laughs> yes? So, the the plain soil. soil. Plain soil. The tilled one? Okay, so that's probably a good guess. And where are the rest of these going? <coughs> probably somewhere in the middle. Right? So that's, what we really want to point out too is, is all these things are impacted by your management. You can impact a lot of moves on your farm, and in your soils, and how you manage it. Uh, we're not going to have all natural areas, but but we can influence how water either is infiltrated into your soils or runs off. So make those observations as we run this. Ready? Right. It seems Got like a lot there. of water that we're putting on in a short time. But the reality is is the way rainfall comes has come recently. In the last couple of years in springs, sometimes we're getting two or three inches of rain in three or four hours. You know, and it doesn't really give our soils an opportunity to take it in. I can remember back years ago, 
my parents used to, my dad used to talk about we, had, we don't get these nice soaking rains like we used to. When we see this work, we really understand what, what that means. Yeah. Now you can already see we're losing a bunch of it off the edge here. It'll start coming out the front already. What's the first thing you notice about this water that's coming running off this field? Get a nice clean, clean water. No, see that, buddy? So basically, in this situation, you're losing your topsoil. Your precious topsoil is so it's not just water that's moving; it's topsoil. That's your classic erosion. The other thing I want you to notice is if you look at the reason this backsplash is on here is look at the soil particles that bounce off. What's the velocity of a raindrop? 32.1 Right. And so when that raindrop hits that open soil, what happens? It's usually dislodging those larger particles. And what's filling in when those larger particles leave? The soil's made of sand, silt, and clay. So when we put away those larger particles, the silts and the clays fill in. And if, if we get an a inch and a half rain, after you just planted soybeans and it gets to be 90 degrees, two days later, what are you going to be doing? Getting out the rotary hole. Because that's where you get those thin crusts. The difference here is having just a little bit of residue at least slows the velocity of that raindrop and allows it maybe to percolate in just a little bit better. So we made some we made some guesses on uh, which ones we're going to run off the most. Looks like for the most we're right. We this, won. This is how much this is how much water we put on that we put on so far, and you can see how much of it is has run off the front. We're getting a little bit running off with this, but if you notice, that's not near as dark brown as that. And if you, when we get done, if you tip one of those buckets and empty it out, you'll find a lot of sediment laying in the bottom. And this is just kind of brown water. So you're still not losing near as much, near as much soil. So if it's not going into the front, where's it going? Where's the water going? Down into the, it's got to be going down into the soil, right? So this is the idea that if you have better structure, you actually have more room to store the water when you get it. And if you can store it in your soil, it's going to be available for your crop to use. If you lose it out up with runoff like that, it's gone forever. The only way you replace that is maybe by an expensive irrigation system. So we hid some stuff from you because we don't want you to get too far ahead on the demonstration. So we will remove this shield. And you can see we have buckets in the back. There's holes in the bottom of these trays. Okay? So what you have to do, you have to do a little math in your head here. This is how much water we rain. The difference between the front and the back bucket is what's in the soil profile. So you look at these two compared to this, that's probably maybe a third of that. All the rest of that water is stored in this soil profile. Okay? Now, I hear what you're saying. You're looking at this one over here and you're going, but Dean, look at all that water. This isn't storing much water in the profile. That's a good thing because there's enough channels and passages that is continuing to pass water down deeper and deeper into the profile. So this has the capacity to hold even a lot more water than this one because it will keep passing it down until it fills up the lower profile before it starts filling up the top of this profile. Where this one, this one's passing some through, but not as much as this. This is probably high in soil organic matter. This has got root passages, it's got wormholes. This has got wormholes in it too, but probably not to the extent of this. It's got a lot of aggregates. This has got aggregates. This has got probably hardly any aggregates. 
So all of those things come together on the soil's ability to um, hold water. So how do you improve soil health? What are the four ways to improve soil health? Organic matter. Cover crops is one. Minimum or no-till. Manure or compost. Diversity. Cropping diversity. Those are the only four ways that you can improve the uh, health of your soil and your soil's ability to, to absorb the water. Thank you. I think another interesting point is to look at the tilled samples. You know, we put these coins on here and see the pedestaling that we have, and this is this is only about a five percent slope. So when we get a real hard rain even at the smallest slope, you get a considerable amount of soil leaving the field. What leaves with, what leaves with your soil particles? Usually nutrients. You know, that can be a real concern. And a lot of these things are just observations of management. Uh, even leaving, can we just leave some residue? Can we leave, how we do our tillage? You know, can we leave, can we leave a higher content of residue? You wanna flip it? One of the things that, that a lot of times when we, we talk to farmers, they'll till so the ground will take in more water. You know, one of the things that this demonstration does, it kind of it kind of proves it to be just the opposite. You know, we think if we till, we open it up, but you know, we see we we pretty much sealed this surface off, and we immediately started losing. What, what do you think this looks like underneath? Dirt, wet or dry. See, that's just about the same as we took it out yesterday. Not perfect, but there's a there's just a thin crust of really wet soil. And if you turn one of those other ones over, they would just be sopping wet. And that is that is you got hardly any water in the soil profile. I think what this what demonstration points out is, is how do we take our management, how do we take our tillage, our crop rotations, and move from this side of the table to that side of the table.